Today we're going to talk to Professor Calvina Fay, who is the Executive Director of Drug Free America Foundation in Florida in the United States. Um, as probably some of our listeners know by now, at the end of October, California Governor Jerry Brown signed Assembly Bill 1300, which will provide possibilities for cities and local governments in California to restrict and or ban so-called medical marijuana dispensaries. The law provides powers to, quote, regulate the location, operation, or establishment of a medical marijuana cooperative or collective. And this is what we're going to talk about today. So we say welcome to Professor Clavina Fay. Good morning, Argus. It's good afternoon for you. Yeah, it is good afternoon in Sweden, and uh, I suppose it's a six-hour time difference. <laughs> About this uh, medical marijuana law in California, what are your thoughts about this law that has now come into uh, function in California? Well, we think it's you know it's good that it passed. It definitely was necessary to clarify uh, some of the issues that the um, folks in California are dealing with. It's unfortunate, however, that time and money and effort and everything has to be spent on such ridiculous issues. Um, the fact is that marijuana is not a medicine. Uh, the Food and Drug Administration has looked at it and rejected it. The Department of Health and Human Services has looked at it and rejected it. Um, it cannot in, in any manner qualify for the scheduling process to become a Schedule One drug uh, to recognize it as medicine. So it's really ridiculous that, that um, you know, that time and effort has to even be spent on the issue. People are um, obviously violating federal law, and they're using marijuana under the guise of medicine, and um, it's taking a lot of time of lawmakers and law enforcers to deal with this issue that really shouldn't have to be dealt with like this. Now, it's the, the medical marijuana, so-called medical marijuana issue, seems to gain momentum in many states in the United States. So far, we have received information that some 16 states have approved locally about um, the fact that so-called medical marijuana dispensaries could be opened. So how, how would we explain this? Uh, it's, it's illegal according to federal law, but still this happens in the states. How come? Well, of course, in the United States, states get to make laws that are specific to the individual states. And much of what has happened, uh, especially in the early days of this, was that these laws were passed by voter ballot initiatives as opposed to being passed by the state legislatures. So uh, some wealthy people, such as George Soros and his colleagues, put up a lot of money to run false campaigns through the media to mislead the public uh, causing them to vote for something that they really knew very little about. And um, the grassroots people, the law enforcement people, the medical community that realized that this was a scam just simply couldn't raise the money to match the, the millions of dollars that um, was put into promoting this. And they ran some very misleading ads. For example, in the state of Arizona, when they initially passed theirs, they ran ads that said, no wonder the drug dealers oppose this proposition because it'll put drug dealers behind bars forever. And in fact, it was the drug legalization advocates that were running the campaign. So that's how they did it. It was a total scam, total misrepresentation. And it's important for people to understand that when we're talking about so-called medical marijuana, this is not some special marijuana that's made in some sterile laboratory environment and packaged and labeled uh, like a, a real medicine would be. We're talking street pot, and we're talking um, people that have, in many cases, been drug dealers all along are, not, are now peddling pot under the guise of medicine in these states that have approved it. Um, so this, this isn't what some people think. Some people think it's, you know, special marijuana produced in a laboratory-type environment, and that's not the case at all. So could we expect any action from the federal authorities, the DA, the ONDCP, and the so-called drug sergeant Karlikovsky, the Obama administration, to uh, counteract the efforts 
by the legalizers? Well, regardless of what the states have done, the federal law remains intact, and, and the federal law says that marijuana is illegal for all purposes. It is not recognized as a medicine because there's not science behind it to demonstrate that it is a safe and effective medicine. It can't be titrated properly. You can't control dosing. And, you know, there's a whole myriad of reasons why it's not recognized at the federal level. To the credit of the U.S. Um, Drug Enforcement Administration, they have gone out and and closed down a number of the marijuana dispensaries enforcing federal law. And I might also add, enforcing the agreement that the United States has made with the United Nations. I mean, we are subject to the um, UN drug conventions that we signed on to, which would require our country, along with other countries that signed on to this, to um, enforce drug laws and to push back against illegal drug use. So, we're, you know, there's really a contradiction here with what our country's doing, in, in, and we've been told this by some UN officials and other experts, that it's actually a violation of the UN drug conventions. So to the credit of the Drug Enforcement Administration, they're doing what they can to deal with specifically the, the uh, marijuana dispensaries. But... Um, I and a lot of other drug policy experts feel that the Obama administration could be doing a lot more uh, that they're not doing, and we believe that they're kind of uh, turning a blind eye and kind of winking at what's happening while communities are destroyed. Because in these in communities where these dispensaries are set up, we've had all kinds of reports of increased crime of. Um, customers being robbed, of people that are running the dispensaries being robbed. We've had a number of murders that have occurred that are related to the operation of dispensaries. We've had businesses that have had to relocate to other communities because their customers no longer want to come into those neighborhoods where the dispensaries are located because, of course, they're a magnet for illegal drug users and frequently when these facilities are raided by our law enforcement people at the federal level, they're finding other drugs in the dispensary, so they're not limiting their market to just selling the marijuana, and they're finding uh, weapons, um, large amounts of cash. They're finding that a number of the facilities are owned and or operated by people with criminal histories, in other words, drug dealers that have been dealing drugs all along. And um, so it's creating unsafe uh, environments for other businesses to operate. And, and some of these facilities are operating in communities where people live. Um, that's the dispensary issue. And then on top of that, of course, the marijuana has to be grown somewhere. And people are growing marijuana in their backyard. We have actual photographs taken from airplanes of people growing um, 20, 30 marijuana I don't even want to call them plants, they're trees, because some of them are over six feet tall in their backyard. So the neighbors are having to put up with this. They, they have the smell of it that offends them. They have um, a runoff of fertilizers and weed killers and um, insecticides and things that are being used to grow the crops with. And, and they're having to put up with this in their neighborhood, not to mention the the foot traffic that comes in there as people come in to, to buy the product. So it's created a lot of chaos in the communities in these states where it's been passed. Well, considering all this, what you've just said, why do you think, is there an explanation why the administration is so reluctant in taking maybe more effective measures to close these dispensaries or at least make sure that we don't get more dispensaries. Why, why is there such a reluctance, do you think? Well, again, I have to give a disclaimer because I do believe that our, our drug czar, um, the director of the Office of National Drug Control Policy, Director Gil Kurlikowski, to his credit, he has spoken out against them a number of times. He's made it very clear that um, you know, that marijuana is not medicine, that our drug laws should be enforced. But unfortunately, you know, he doesn't have the authority to, you know, and the muscle to get behind the agencies that should be dealing with this. And, of course, um, we've gotten some very mixed messages from our Attorney General, Eric Holder, who has, uh, has spoken publicly uh, with some very confusing messages that really has caused 
those that operate these drug facilities to think that it's okay. And, and we've actually seen an increase since he spoke out with his confusing message. Uh, to, to answer why the administration doesn't get more aggressive with this, I don't really know the answer unless it's politics at play. We do know that uh, George Soros put a tremendous amount of money into the campaign of our uh, some of our current leaders, including our president. And um, we do know that he is the granddaddy warbuck, so to speak, that's financing a good bit of the drug legalization movement. So the question in my mind is, does, you know, is that payback? Are we now seeing, um, as a result of investing so much into a number of different uh, political leaders' campaigns um, to get them elected, are we now seeing the desires for George Soros's vision of drug policy now being put into play indirectly without, you know, passing a law to say we're going to legalize drugs, just ignore our drug laws, not enforce them, and allow drugs to proliferate in our neighborhood. Is that what's happening? Can I say that for sure? No, I can't. But does it look like that's a possibility? Absolutely it does. Um, To turn a blind eye to this, knowing that neighborhoods are being... um, overcome with marijuana grows and dispensaries being opened and to know how many people we have that are using marijuana now under the guise of medicine and to do nothing about it to me is just shameful and irresponsible and um, I think that our current administration is not doing all that could be and should be done. To give you an example, we don't really know how many people in the state of California are smoking Marijuana under the guise of medicine, but the official estimates are between 300 and 400,000 people smoking pot, uh, calling it medicine. If you look at what data we can get our hands on, and, and because there is no requirement in the state of California to track it statewide, we have to look at it county by county. But if you just look in San Diego, where we can get some of the best data, 98% of the people that are smoking pot under the guise of medicine, are treating so-called pain. Now, I'm not making light of pain. Um, I have chronic pain myself, and and it actually last night kept me up pretty much all night long. But pain is a subjective category, and we do have uh, clear indications from interviews that have actually been done with people who are smoking pot as a so-called medicine. People are treating things like backaches, stomach aches, menstrual cramps, headaches, So clearly, um, 98% of the people in San Diego smoking it, saying they're treating pain, may or may not really need anything for their so-called pain. Um, When this was promoted as, as medicine to begin with, it was claimed that it was needed to treat AIDS, cancer, and glaucoma. But if you look at the statistics in San Diego, only 2% are treating all three of those conditions combined. And the really disturbing thing about the San Diego data is that 12% of the people using marijuana under the guise of medicine are young people. They're under the age of 21. If you look at the data in all of the states that we're able to get our arms around, and again, it's not consistently gathered, but if you look at all of it, Um, the majority of the people, and I'm talking on an average of uh, 90% or more, are treating pain. They're not treating uh, diseases. You know, It's not like they're at end of life, which is the way this got promoted to begin with. So, And and we're also seeing that the majority of the users are, are young people. They're under the age of 50. So I find it very difficult to believe that we have so many young people, and I do consider anybody under the age of 50 young, that have such serious conditions with all the modern medicine we have today and nothing works for them except to smoke marijuana. I mean, I just find that incredible. If we look at your own state then, Florida, um, how would you describe the situation regarding medical marijuana in your state? Well, I I live in the state of Florida, and in Florida, uh, marijuana is illegal both at the federal and the state level for all purposes. We do not recognize it as a medicine. The drug legalization advocates um, did come into Florida a few years ago and did try to get uh, an initiative on our ballot for the voters to consider. 
We protested the language in the initiative to keep it off the ballot. It went all the way to the state Supreme Court, and ultimately it was ruled that they could put it on the ballot, but it was too late at that point for them to run their campaign before the election. They are currently gathering signatures again. They have plans to put it on our ballot here in 2012 for the November election. We, of course, are organizing and educating the public about the scam so that people will know what they're voting for. In our state, a ballot initiative has to pass with 60% voter approval, so they definitely would have an uphill road to be able to get it passed. But because we know that groups that are financed by George Soros and some of his wealthy colleagues can typically bring in $5, $6 million to run campaigns like this, we know that could happen here in Florida. So we're not taking it lightly. We are endeavoring to make sure people understand the issue and understand that this is not an issue that's being pushed by the American Medical Association or the National Glaucoma Society or any of our nationally recognized legitimate medical groups. It's not doctors pushing it. It's drug legalizers. It's people who, in many cases, are drug dealers and drug users. This has nothing to do with medicine. It has everything to do with drug legalization. And that's the message we're trying to get out there so people can understand. And there's a big concern because it does mislead some people who really are sick. And that's a very dangerous road to go down, to have someone that is legitimately ill. For example, someone who has AIDS, who has a compromised immune system, for them to forego any legitimate medicines and to smoke pot, which has been shown actually to suppress the immune system, is a very dangerous thing to be doing. So we're very concerned that truly sick people might be misled and could be harmed in the process. You're listening to Professor Colvina Fay, who is the Executive Director of Drug Free America Foundation based in Florida in the United States. She's been talking about the situation in California and the recent law signed by California Governor Jerry Brown and also about the situation in Florida. We thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you very much, Calvino.